It was a miracle. Those were the only words a Pan American pilot could find today to describe the safe landing of his disabled airliner after it lost part of a wing and caught fire in the air. The plane was bound from San Francisco International Airport to Hawaii. It scattered flaming debris over the San Francisco area before landing safely late yesterday at Travis Air Force Base, northeast of the city. This was the scene at Travis Air Force Base only moments after the crippled jetliner had touched down in a fantastic landing. The hero of the day was the pilot, Captain C.H. Kimes from Danville, California. The plane had only been in flight for 34 minutes out of San Francisco's International Airport, and suddenly, at an altitude of between five and 600 feet, the fire broke out. In Captain Kimes' words, I had no idea what caused it. It could have been a bird flying into the engine intake, or it could have been engine failure. It was a grotesque sight. One third of the right wing gone, reminiscent of a wounded bomber returning from a combat mission. The volatile jet fuel was still dripping from the ripped open wing tanks as these pictures were taken. Among the 143 passengers were Mr. and Mrs. William Richmond from Fair Oaks near Sacramento. They had an 8mm home movie camera with them, and they were able to take spectacular films of the flight. Mr. Richmond described his exclusive color film for KNBC News. Well, when we started to take off, why my wife here started to take movies of the uh, actual takeoff. And just about the time we started to put the camera away, why the wing burst in the fire looked just like uh, a, a, a lighter cigarette lighter just like that you know it's just bursting in flames and she kept right on taking the movies of the actual fire itself and then a um, piece of the I think a piece of the wing fell off didn't it? A very big piece and it it kept getting bigger and then the airplane went faster and uh, started to go out and I gave a sigh of relief but then it came up again and then uh, it went faster again, and then it died out. The captain did a wonderful <laughs> job. He actually speeded up the plane and put out the fire itself. And when a piece of the wing went, the fellow next to me just said, threw his hands up and said, that's it, we're through. And uh, I thought we were, I really did. But then the fire went out completely, and just before we got here to Travis, the uh, flame started up again. There was smoke, and I thought, sure, it was going to start all over again. And of course, by this time, I'd given up really all hope, but the pilot, the uh, captain of the plane, he started speeding it up again and put it out for the second time. Did a very wonderful job, I, I thought. But we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. <laughs> uh, why were you taking the pictures? Well, one thought that I had at this time, right at the time she was taking the pictures, that at least if we didn't make it, maybe someone could find the, the pictures in whatever wreckage or there was and be able to tell exactly what did happen. And uh, this is why I felt that it was a good idea for her to take the movies at this time. So that if, if, you know, if something had happened, why they at least could find the film and see what had actually happened. The big engine fell out of the sky and ripped through the roof of a cabinet shop in San Bruno, a small community south of San Francisco. There were nearly a dozen workers in that building. The engine missed them by less than 15 feet. It sliced through a wooden beam just under the roof and then charged out of the building through an eight-inch thick concrete wall. Outside, it tore through and scattered some mobile equipment owned by the firm and finally came to rest on a mound of dirt. A large section of the wing slammed down on the Grand Street in South San Francisco. There started a small grass fire. A six-foot piece of wing hit the ground in Holy Cross Cemetery and what appeared like a section from the exhaust struck at the rear of a housing area also in South San Francisco. Miraculously, there were no injuries. Again at Travis, the excitement was not over yet. Pan American dispatched another 707 to the base to pick up the passengers, another plane to take them across the Pacific. But this jet also got into trouble. Its nose gear collapsed only seconds after it stopped on the runway. Finally, a third one arrived at Travis, and it landed safely. Of the 143 original passengers, all but eight boarded the third jet to continue their memorable trip on to Hawaii, a courageous tribute to man's confidence in the machines he built.